to the fourth in our series on early 20, late 19th and early 20th century sleeping bags. Uh, I call this the hoity-toity sleeping bag. Uh, I would have been uh, maybe a little bit more correct if I had called this a very British sleeping bag. In fact, if I did a better British accent, this, this video would be a little funnier. Uh, I do a fairly tolerable John Wayne, but my British accent, not so good. Anyway, we're going to be talking now about the Jaeger sleeping bag. Okay, so back in 1883, this guy, Gustav Jaeger, wrote this book. And this guy, Louis Tomlin, he's the one with the beard, read the book and was so impressed by it that he had translated the book into English and then asked Dr. Yeager if he would license his name so that he could produce products based on the theories that Dr. Yeager had put out in the book. Okay, so what was in the book? What is it that makes a guy translate somebody else's book into English, have it published, and license his name so he can start a company? It has to do with uh, a health and wellness movement that was going around in Europe and the United States in the late 19th century. People were thinking of all sorts of ways they could live healthier lives. Few people realized, but as a percentage of population, uh, more people spent more time outdoors, hunting, camping, fishing, in the 1880s and 1890s than at any other time during our history until the late 1960s and early 1970s. And it was because of this health and wellness movement. What was Jaeger's uh, contribution to this movement? Well, his reasoning was is that if you're going to be healthy, you've got to pay attention to the fact that you're an animal. You're not a plant. And because you're an animal, the only thing that should touch your skin is animal fibers. You with me? And what that means is no tidy whities Wool underwear. And that is what Mr. Tomlin was going to produce. So they sold wool underwear for men wool underwear for women and wool underwear for the little children and wool underwear for the summertime and wait what if you were following the science in 1883 you were wearing wool underwear in the summertime all year round uh, to be fair to the Jaeger company, they were making underwear. They weren't making it out of uh, sheep wool. They were making it out of camel hair, which is a good deal. It's a good deal softer on the skin, and uh, probably uh, has got some kind of scientific thing about being better kind of animal fur for being next to your skin and making you healthy, according to Dr. Jaeger and all that kind of good stuff. Whether or not they sold a lot of summertime wool underwear uh, is up to question. What isn't up to question is history was about to give the Jaeger Company a very big boost. The Royal Geographic Society was funding polar expeditions and they needed a lot of wool underwear. Take a look at these pictures. Now all these pictures are from a 
polar explorer who donated to them them to the Scott Polar Institute. They're actually from the 1934-37 expedition, but they're typical of the types of products that Jaeger provided to polar explorations. Oh, oh my, oh my, my pretty, my pretty soft camel hair sleeping bag. It's... <laughs> I've got my pants on. <laughs> now, in Jaeger's 1887 catalog, they introduced a new product. Uh, they introduced blankets. And for those of you uh, who have watched the video on the paired blankets I did earlier, you'll see where uh, they say that they don't need to sell these in a pair. They're warm enough to be sold as a single blanket. Now, also in the 1887 catalog is the first instance where we see Jaeger is providing sleeping sacks for men. And they give a dimension of three feet by six and one half feet long. Now, in 1892, uh, Jaeger finally puts an illustration of the sleeping sack in their catalog. And you can see here that the earliest models of the Kenwood were basically uh, the blanket that they sell. You can see the Greek key pattern on that blanket. And then it has, uh, let's count them, one, two, three, four, five, six buttons on the side where it opens almost the complete length, leaving only a foot box. And for those of you who wonder why I call this a hoity toity sleeping bag, well, that $25 price tag right there uh, in 1892 is equal to $772 today. That's in comparison to the Kenwood bag. The price at the same time in about the 1890s was $15 or about $463 today. Now, that's pretty much a normal price for a good quality sleeping bag that we would find today. It's about $460, $400, and $500, somewhere in that range. But, boy, it's got to be a real good sleeping bag for me to pay $700, almost $800. Okay, so somewhere at the early part of the 20th century, 1900, 1901, somewhere in there, uh, the Jaeger Company changed the design of the bag. Uh, and that will be the subject of the artifact we're, we're looking at right now. It's difficult to determine the uh, actual vintage of these bags because uh, all of the information on Jaeger logos refers to the clothing that they produced after 1920-30, something like that. Uh, and they used a, a number of different styles at the same time. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to retire to the floor of the drawing room of my palatial suburban estate and show you some stills of uh, the construction of the bag. We do this in case you want to make one of your own or if you are a student of 20th century camping gear. Let's take a look. Okay, so the, uh, the artifact, the, the Jaeger sleeping bag we've got, I'm best guess I can say is that this is from the late 1920s. Uh, again, uh, we'll have a little discussion about logos here in a minute, but the bag itself is as advertised at 36 inches wide and 78 inches long. Uh, you'll notice that the new design about 1901 has three buttons instead of six buttons that go down further on the bag. Uh, it's also, uh, in modern terminology, a left-hand bag or a right-hand bag, depending on whether you flip it over or not, or if you're anal about which way your buttons and logo are po pointing. If you're that anal, it's a right-hand bag. If you don't care, it can be a left-hand bag. Okay? All righty. The flap is secured by three buttons. It's 27 inches from the top to the end of the opening. If you're interested in making one of these bags, this detail is fairly important. It's made out of three separate pieces of wool. 
and they use a bias tape to secure the edges, which means you don't have to use a serger uh, in order because of the wool construction. Now, I wanted to make a close up of the bag, uh, of the material on this bag, to show you just how tight this weave is. It's actually tighter than a, than a regular sheep's wool bag, and it is very, very soft, very, very comfortable. I can see how underwear made out of this material uh, would be comfortable. Okay, so a word on logos. There are two bags of which I am aware that have provenance for vintage. This first one, is from a uh, 1901 ex uh, Kohler Explorer. You can buy this bag for about $5,000 on the internet right now. This next one is another that has named provenance to a Polar Explorer from the Terra Nova expedition in 1913. This third one purports to be a World War I officer's Jaeger sleeping bag, but there is no documented provenance. The problem with that is, so is this one. This one claims to be a World War I officer's Jaeger sleeping bag. I offer this picture of mine, and I'll tell you that I can guess that it's somewhere in the late 1920s. And I'll tell you why here in a second. Okay, so we know from period advertising that Jaeger did sell sleeping bags to World War I officers. So we can believe either one of those two that claim to be from World War I officers, I tend to go towards the green bag. You make your own decision there. Uh, we also know that Jaeger products were marketed to sourdoughs in the Klondike uh, through advertising in some of the Canadian papers and some of the uh, uh, catalogs and things aimed towards those adventurers. Okay, so sometime in the middle 1930s, uh, the Jaeger company started to de-emphasize its marketing strategy uh, based on the science, because, you know, science changed. And uh, they started moving more towards fashion, particularly women's fashion. Now, while they still marketed underwear, they de-emphasized a lot of the other products, except as high-end fashion items. Now, we know from World War II records that the Jaeger Company produced woolen garments for the British Army, but there's no record of them producing any sleeping bags for the British Army, the Commonwealth Army, and I haven't yet found any advertising for sleeping bags uh, marketed to officers in uh, the World War II British or Commonwealth Army. So I'm under the impression that they just stopped making that stuff and focused more on uh, fashion. So this is why I say that my bag is late 20s, early 30s. It's probably one of the later production bags. Uh, it's as honest as I can be. It's the youngest it could be. It could be older. I just can't prove it. Okay, well, there you go. This, this kind of concludes the first part of our series on sleeping bags, and that's focusing on late 19th and early 20th century wool sleeping bags. Wool bags were the first bags that uh, were commercially available. Uh, we will be talking about later insulation methods, but the next video is going to be kind of to, to, to recap the whole wool bag thing, put it all together and, and so that we can understand why in the cornbread hell this crazy old man doing this stuff. And then we're going to move into kind of a, a palate cleanser and you know, get off the sleeping bag thing for a while. And well, we'll start talking about my alcohol problem. See you in a few days.
Thank you.